Welcome back, detectives, to some more ABC murders. You know it. Before I do anything, I have to look in the mirror. Gotta get those ego points. I think every time you look at it, as long as it's a new scene, you get more ego points. So, that's why I've looked at this one multiple times. Let me take a look at this fine sir here. Donald Frazier. This man is tired. Yeah, he hasn't shaved in days. His eyes look sleepy. And... This is his clothes are dirty. And it looks as if he didn't even bother to undress before going to bed. So let's talk to him, see what he wants. Mr. Paddle, I don't know why I'm here. Uh, let's go with this. You wanted to talk, and you came to find the only man capable of hearing you. Mr. Paro, since Betty's death, I've doubts about myself. I don't know what to do. And I keep having a horrible dream three nights in a row. Have a drink, and tell me about this dream. It's always the same. I'm on the beach with Betty. I grab her round the throat and I squeeze and squeeze until she's dead. Her head falls back and I see that it's no longer Betty. It's Megan's face. Have you seen Megan Barnard recently? Yes, our grief has brought us together. I never really knew her before. She's really quite a remarkable girl. But I would never tell her about my dream. Why not? Is it her you are attacking in your dream? No, it's Betty. And once Betty is dead, it's Megan's face that appears in its place. Very interesting. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. Alright, so I think that's a red herring. I don't think Donald Frazier's guilty at this point. So let me see how I can interpret his dream here. So Donald with, was very much in love with Betty. I guess that's kind of relevant to the way his dream is coming along. Yeah, let's go with that. And let's see what else we have here. Yeah, he was a violent man. I don't know if that really fits in though. He does not kill Megan in his dream, he kills Betty. I don't think he's guilty about killing Betty, because I don't think he killed her. I think he's just conflicted between two different women here. So Donald's starting to have feelings for Megan. Okay. Mr. Fraser, I think that the real meaning of this dream is that you are in love with Megan Barnard. Please go on. Do This dream certainly betrays your guilt. Oh. But what do you feel guilty about? Having killed your fiancé? Possible. Or forgetting her very quickly for her sister? Certainly. And this forgetting is perceived as a second death. So you don't really think I was the one who killed Betty? I do not exclude this theory. I am simply saying that I do not need to know that fact to explain your dream and your guilt. Thank you for being frank, Mr. Poirot. You've helped me a great deal. I'm going back to Bexhill. I'll not take any more of your time up. It is late, Mr. Fraser, and you are tired. I'll sleep on the train. I like trains. It's easy to sleep rocked by the sound of the wheels. Poor boy, he seems completely lost. Well, women seem to like him. I think Megan will take care of him. Oh, I remember. Did you order the product I needed? Yes, we'll be receiving it tomorrow. Bien, it is late. And ask Miss Gray to come tomorrow morning. I have a few questions I wish to ask her. So I was starting to suspect Franklin of being the murderer because he liked trains, but it looks like Donald also likes trains, so I don't know. I asked you here in order to answer a very important question.
So I do want to confront her on the fact that she said she didn't see anybody the day of the murder. But that was kind of disproven by our old dying lady upstairs in the house. Am I right in thinking you said that you did not speak to anyone on the day Sir Carmichael was murdered? It's the absolute truth. Yet, Lady Clark maintained that she saw you talking to a stranger on the front doorstep. Really? She must have been mistaken. Oh, I remember now. I'd forgotten all about it, but it wasn't important. It was just a salesman. One of those traders who sell stockings from door to door. Can you describe him to me? Medium size. Mm, glasses. Dark suit and a felt hat. Not the sort of man you notice. Completely harmless. That's why I forgot all about him. Nothing else? He was very hesitant and shy. Usually, door-to-door -door salesmen are very confident, but he wasn't. So that is very interesting indeed. Looks like stockings connect all three of the murders. The one thing that's off about this is that this guy appears to be shy, but our criminal profile in the, identifies the criminal as somebody who's very confident in himself. So... Let me see she resigned because she wanted to. You did not leave Cheston willingly, I believe. I don't wish to lie. Lady Clark did not appreciate my presence. And Franklin cannot go against the wishes of a sick lady. He is a good man. And he worries a great deal about his sister-in-law. I noticed that you left some personal belongings behind at Cheston. It was too risky for you to keep these objects, am I correct? Risky? What was the risk? So she'd be worried that she'd get accused of theft. You know very well what Lady Clark might have said if you had kept these objects. Indeed. These objects were gifts. But Lady Clark would have been convinced that I'd stolen them. By returning them, I put an end to such evil gossip. Yeah. I must ask you one last question. Please reply frankly with either yes or no. If Lady Clark had died, would you have agreed to marry Sir Carmichael if he'd ask you? How dare you ask such a question? Sir Carmichael treated me just like his daughter. And all that I ever felt him was affection and gratitude, nothing else. Thank you, mademoiselle. I will not keep you any longer. I met Thora Gray on the stairs. Her cheeks were ablaze, and she appeared to be deeply hurt. Poirot, have you offended the poor girl again? Do you have good reasons for accusing her? I accused her of nothing, Hastings. I simply asked her an important question she did not answer. Let us see if we can answer it for her. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. Alright, let's connect some more dots here. Would Thora have married Sir Carmichael? If he had lived. Well. I don't know. She she kind of got offended when I asked her about it. She had this brooch here. So I think she would have. Let's see what else we got. Uh, that could make sense. I don't know. Yeah, that's kind of fishy that she's evasive. Let me see what else we have here, though. She's a seductress. Hmm, I don't know. Several of these could fit. Sir Carmichael has to reciprocate it, though, so I'm gonna try this. Thora wanted to be married, and certainly... That was too quick for you me to read. know how to read between the lines, Hastings. When Sir Carmichael refers to paternal affection, he is lying to himself. Read this engraving on the brooch. A dark dragon for an angel with glossy hair. These are the words of a lover, not a father. Lady Clark was not wrong. What if Sir Carmichael had fallen in love with his secretary? That doesn't mean that she forced him to do so. True, there are extenuating circumstances. She is a penniless orphan. 
but she is calculating. Just look how she avoided it when asked if she would have married Clark. I see. You think she seduced Sir Carmichael for her own gain, and that now she is doing the same with his brother. Praro, your world is a very dark place. Do not get carried away, mon ami. We have another more important matter to settle. Really? Yes. Would you believe that Miss Grey taught me something new? Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. I love the dynamic and the relationship between these two guys. It's really funny. Is there another common point between the murders? Yes, the stockings. Miss Ash's personal effects, a stocking box, and an account book. Let me make sure that we got everything here. Door-to-door -door salesman coming towards the house. Again, he was selling the stockings. Yeah, the stockings, stockings, stockings. It's all about the stockings. So, let me do those. So, yep. It's perfectly clear, Hastings. Perfectly clear. Indeed, a stocking seller visited Andover, Bexhill, and Churston on the day of each murder. We have our suspect. This should be of interest to Jop. Alright, so I should call Jap here. Let me take a look at these newspapers first, though. Daily Blag, August 31, 1935. Moustache at half-mast. Poirot's repeated failure in ABC case. Oh. Sometimes, small things trouble great men. Hastings, faithful collaborator of the Belgian detective, knows something about it. Three mornings in a row, he confided to us, the cook broke the egg yolks when preparing Poirot's breakfast. This apparently casual event has greatly disturbed my friend, to the point it breaks his concentration and slows his judgment. I also noticed his moustache, of which he's so proud, being duller than usual. Poirot, I assure you I haven't said any such thing to the journalists. They twist everything. Hmm. Wow. The truth comes out, guys. What a douche. Royal Mathematical and Statistical Society's Bulletin, September the 9th, 1935. The Alphabet Murder, a Methodical Madman. It's highly probable that the Alphabet Murderer will kill again. Could we possibly estimate the number of victims in his next crime? Yes, and it is easy. As soon as we know the ratio of towns, cities and villages whose names begin with a D and the ratio of English people whose names are spelled the same. On the one hand, the ratio of towns, cities and villages in England with a name starting with D and on the other hand, the ratio of English people with a name also starting with D. After this initial calculation, it is easy to deduce the likelihood of actually being murdered if you belong to the target population. Go to the last page to find our results and details on the calculations. Pretty impressive stuff there. Uh, what else? I guess let's call Jap. Chief Inspector, we are looking for a stocking salesman. I see you have a suspect? Yes. Contact all the stocking wholesalers who may employ him. Your suspect is a salesman? No, he does not take orders. He sells door to door. Right. The hunt is on. I hope I inspected everything because it looks like the scene is changing. Are you leaving, Mr. Cust? Yes, I'm going to Cheltenham. You shouldn't travel today. You don't look very well. I have to. I... I have engagements. I must respect them. Dear God. A murderer. So who is that guy? We need to find him. Can you get the post, Hastings? And why don't you go and get it yourself? Très bien. 
What's going on? I've never known Hastings to be so disagreeable. Yeah, first he's snitching to the journalist. Now he's being a douche. I don't know what's going on. What if it's like a X7 plot twist and he's the murderer all along? Could you believe that? Let's go ahead and look in the mirror, first of all. Get more ego points. Go ahead and get the mail. Poor Mr. Poirot. I'm quite sorry for you. If at first you don't succeed, try, try again. We've a long way to go still. Typerie? No, that comes later. Letter T. The next little incident will take place in Doncaster on September 11th. So long, ABC. I should compare this letter with the one on my desk which I received earlier to see if it does indeed come from the same person. Are they really going to make me compare the letters again for like the 20th time? That's kind of upsetting. Let me look back here though. There's always something back there. So I've already looked at some of this stuff, so I don't know if it counts every time you look at it for points. Hastings' photo album he is very proud of his bag. Yeah, we've already seen this. I just want to make sure I'm not missing any ego points anywhere. Tristan Devon, population 500 inhabitants. Hourly of trains, London Tristan. Trains of evening, London, 6.45 p.m. Newton about, 11 a.m. Charleston, 11.45 a.m. London, 11.45 p.m. Newton about, 6.08 a.m. Charleston, 7.15 a.m. Alright, I don't think I got any points for that, but still... Let me see if there's any new newspaper articles today, prior to comparing the letters. And it looks like we've already seen it, it's the same ones as yesterday. I really like our protagonist here, Mr. Poirot. I like how orderly he is, I like his mustache, and I like how objective he is. He is a true man of objectivity. Let me turn on the fan, of course. Take a seat in my leather ah, seat. Some cool hair. And then we'll compare the letters. <sighs> I'm just sitting because I used to get ego points every time I sit down. Doesn't look like I'm getting any more though. Let's go ahead and do this. Let us examine this more closely. Alright, unless there's something different this time, that's gonna be kind of annoying if I'm doing this three times. Certain characters in the two letters may have similar defects. So we all know by now yes, the eye. this eye is weird. Right, let us compare this with the other letter. Yes. The eye characters in the two letters do indeed have the same defects. That's so weird. I have to find some other similar defects to confirm my theory. I don't know why they make you do this three times. It really doesn't make much sense. Hmm. The W is not printed properly. Again, it would be more fun if you had to compare it every time, but with different characteristics. Right. Let us compare this with the other letter. Of course, the W characters in the two letters do indeed have the same defects. I have to find some other similar defects to confirm my theory. And of course, the capital A. Yes, the A appears to be quite unusual. Right, let us compare this with the other letter. Uh, hopefully it's the last time I gotta do this. That's right. The A characters in the two letters do indeed have the same defects. My theory was right. 
These two letters were written with the same typewriter. Hey, Stings, he strikes tomorrow. Chief Inspector Jap? He's on another line. Can I take a message? Yes, please, mademoiselle. It is from Hercule Poirot. Tell him ABC strikes tomorrow in Doncaster. He must call me back. Very well, sir. Bien, now I'm going to see what I can find from these burnt documents. I've received the product I need. Hastings, if you do not mind, I would like you to take a few notes. Yes, yes. Hastings is pissed at something, man. I don't know what's going on with him. So let's go decipher the documents. Now, down to work. One of these needs putting in order a little. Okay. Um. So let's see what we can do here. We can start with the edge pieces. I guess this one's static. I can't even move it. So they kind of give you something to start with. There we go. That kind of works. And then we can do that one right there. This one looks like a top corner. This page will be reconstructed in a flash. Yeah. Yeah, it will. Thanks for observing that. This page is finished. Nice. That's done. Three more to go. So let's do this one next. And again, this one's static, so it kind of gives you a clue of how to get started. This looks like the top here. This looks like an edge. No? Um, let's see. Maybe this one right here? And then... Try this one right there. This has to be the bottom. I tried this one here, didn't I? Why doesn't that work? Alright, that's really shady. This there we page go. page is finished. That was stupid. I was trying to put and it in the right place. Done. It's easier than I thought. Right, this one is the one that's static. Kind of maybe put that one there. And then this looks like it fits right here. This page will be reconstructed in a flash. Maybe that one right there. This is a right edge. And this is the bottom. This page is finished. Only one more. Keep going. Alright, let's do this. Pretty easy so far. Not having too much of a hard time with it. This looks like a top right edge. Uh, this looks like a left edge. This looks like the bottom. Maybe not. Let me kind of... Let me use this one right here. And then that one right there. I think that this is right. And there we go. This page is finished. All the pages are reconstructed. So, yeah, remember Hastings telling me that I need to kind of soak some chemical in it? So, let's put the cloth there. The cloth is now soaked with solvent. And then let's wash the papers with it. Got it! Make a note, Hastings, make a note! Mrs. Alice Asha, Sharpona in Andover. Tracheitis, hemoptysis, prescribed laudanum. I got it. Look. Poirot, where on earth did you find these files? On a fire at the bottom of the garden at Comside. All right, but where did the person who burned them find them? So let's take a look at all the notes here. Alice Asher, shopkeeper in Hendover. Tracheitis, hemoptysis, chronic cough with loss of blood. Prescribed laudanum-based cough medicine. 
Sounds like tuberculosis to me. Betty Barnard, waitress in Bexhill. Chronic bronchitis, causing dysphonia. Advice to stop smoking. That one's fair enough, I can agree with that. Alexander Bonaparte Cast. While wounded, mustard gas and head trauma. Pulmonary emphysema. Hemoptysis. Coughing fits with blood. Suffers from absences and amnesia. Definitely sounds like some interstitial lung disease to me. Dick Dudley Dunbar. Owner of the Black Swan Hotel in Doncaster. Asthmatic. Heart disease. Heart condition. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. So all the victims have medical records at this house, which is pretty interesting. Where did the burned documents come from? So let's take a look at what we can find. Hmm. Yes, Mrs. Asher's name is visible on the burned documents. Yeah, the medical records must have been consulted recently because they were found burnt in the corner. That makes sense. And all victims suffered from throat afflictions. So the documents come from Dr. Clark's patient records. The burned documents are medical records and without a doubt, they come from Clark's archives. First of all, because all the patients have throat conditions. And secondly, their name starts with either A, B, C or D. And it is precisely the files that match these letters that have been tampered with. But why burn these files? How come the names of the two victims appear on them? And who are the two other patients? These are very good questions. So that Alexander um, Bonaparte cussed, his name appeared again, and that's very fishy. And I think it may be the name of our killer, quite honestly, at this point. So let me answer the phone here. Hello, Poirot. Any news, Chief Inspector? You wanted a stocking seller? We have one. Reported by his landlady who thought he was behaving suspiciously. He has the most unbelievable name. Yes. Alexander Bonaparte Cust. Yes. Alexander Bonaparte Cust? How did you guess? Poirot, you have magical powers. It's a serious lead. I called Doncaster. A person matching Cust's description has been seen at the station. He got off the train from London, but after that, nobody knows where he went. It has to be the hotel that we saw, so... Look for him at the Black Swan Hotel. What? How do you know he's there? Trust me, Chief Inspector. You appear to be very sure of yourself. Very well. I'll call the Black Swan straight away. The owner is going to get a shock when he learns that there's a murderer under his roof. Ah, wait a minute. Because... From the letter, the victim is actually going to be that person from the fourth burnt document which had a heart condition. So, I don't want to scare him or anything or he might actually die from a heart attack. I don't know, I'm just thinking crazy here. Chief Inspector, I would rather call myself. As you wish. Please go ahead. I don't know if you guys follow my train of logic through that or even if it means anything. Hello, the Black Swan. Hercule Poirot here. May I speak to the owner? Speaking. Dick Dudley Dunbar. How can I help you? Is there Mr. Cast among your guests? He arrived today. Shall I call him for you? Yes. Or... Yes, please. Wait a minute. I'm just looking for his room number. I believe that I made a mistake. If anyone asks for him, he will understand that we are onto him, take fright, and flee. Mr. Dunbar, I've changed my mind. It's best if you keep this from Cust. Damn it, I might have missed but an eagle point there. Who is this Cust? Um. Uh, let me go gentle. Have you heard about the ABC case? Oh, yes. I must say, I'm not all that reassured. What with my name starting with D and all that? You're in danger. Beware of your guest. Do you think that Cust might be dangerous? Oh, I do hope you're wrong. He seems so harmless, you know. Oh, 
Yes, completely harmless. Um, let's go with this again, being gentle. We must not overestimate the danger. After all, we are not absolutely sure he is guilty. What should I do? Just keep an eye on him. I'm not gonna ask somebody with a heart condition to go fight a killer. Watch him. If he leaves the hotel, watch where he is heading. I'll call the police in Doncaster immediately. When they arrive, keep out of the way. Oh, indeed. I shall keep out of the way. I have a bad heart, you see. Ah, look at that, there you go. A big shot could kill me. Thank you for having warned me. Damn, I feel like a boss for predicting that one. Hello, Poirot. We have some good news. The police in Doncaster have caught our man at the Black Swan Hotel. They're sending him here by train. While we're waiting to question Cust, we could search his room in London. Where does he live? The Marbury Guest House. I'll see you there. Yes, but start without me. First of all, I have to sort out a few details for Cust's transfer. I understand. A bientôt. I hope I didn't miss ego points from messing up that conversation, Hastings, though. We are making good progress. Please go and search the room of our number one suspect. With pleasure. I did have a dentist appointment, but I'll cancel. The dentist. So that is why you are so nervous and bad-tempered. A visit to the dentist is never an enjoyable prospect. But an unavoidable one. Go to your appointment, Hastings. I will manage on my own. All right, so I think we're closing in on this murderer. About to go search his room, of all things. To Marbury Guest House, please. So that should be pretty fun. And... This is still a cutscene here. I don't know if I'm entirely convinced, though, because... This guy she seems very shy and meek, not confident like our killer profile, so I don't know. Either way, in the next episode, we are going to go inside the Marbury Guest House and start investigating the suspect's room. See if we can find anything, so I hope you guys are excited. Be sure to leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you on the next episode.